What's up, church fam? Wanted to um, give everybody just a minute or two to log on. Um, be patient with us. I'm going to try and monitor down here. Sorry if I if I lose track of the, the camera. I'm going to try and look and see uh, who all has joined and give, give everybody just a minute. Um, wanted to say a huge thank you to our worship team this morning. Um, they were here practicing this weekend and, and wanted to uh, put something together for us so we could come together uh, for a time of worship this morning. We're definitely living in interesting times. Uh, this, is, this is all new to us. So um, we ask that you would please uh, have patience with us as we are trying our best to kind of navigate this new terrain. Um, it is, uh, it's an interesting experience, but we're excited because we know that, um, that even though we desperately want to be together uh, physically, that the church is not confined to our four walls here on Route 4, so that we, we understand that God is able to do great things even in the midst of this turmoil. In fact, I would argue that uh, God will do great things uh, because of uh, the situation that we're facing today. So. If you are watching, um, if you would would like or if you're able to, maybe leave a comment, a hand wave, something just so I can uh, just so I can see that that people are are here. Um, if at any point you want to leave a comment, um, I will do my best to try and and try and answer it. Please, um, I apologize in advance if you do and I miss you again. I'm I'm just kind of trying to get my feet wet. On this whole thing um, so anyways um, just a couple notes again as we are um, giving people just a moment uh, to get on for for our um, our elderly Saints those 65 and older we do want to say we're thinking about you we're praying for you and if you need anything please do not hesitate to reach out to the church um, I know that that our pastor's wife sister Heideball has been uh, doing a phenomenal job of touching base with, uh, with with some of you guys. If you need anything, uh, please reach out to the church. We want to be there for you. We want to help you in any way that we can. Um, so again, please please do your best if you're able to 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 stay inside. Uh, we love you. We want you around for a, for a whole lot longer. Um, so uh, please stay inside, and we will do our best to get you whatever it is that you knew, uh, that that you need, whether it's groceries or food, anything like that. So please, uh, please feel free to reach out, reach out for us. Um, just to kind of give you guys an idea, I've got a laptop here with my notes and my Bible, so I'm I'm gonna do my best to to stay looking at the camera here and try and make some eye contact. But um, if I if I do a bad job at that, I uh, apologize in advance. So just a couple things that, um, that I think we should consider during this time is, is, this is this is a great time for us to take a personal inventory of our own lives and to kind of ask ourselves, what, what has been taking priority in my life? Um, are there distractions that I've allowed to kind of move to the forefront uh, in my in my life that gets my attention? Am I putting things above my walk with God? Uh, I, I never in a million years would imagine that the entire sports world, from from the college level and March Madness and and the billions of dollars that that brings in uh, to to the NBA, to you know. The MLB, the, oh, oh, the Reds opening day is completely uh, postponed. I never thought we would be living in such a time where, where sports, which I think if we all were honest with ourselves, we could, see, we could say that sports has become maybe even an idol uh, in some of our lives, something that we put above God. And sports is now gone. That distraction has been removed. Uh, what about entertainment? Uh, you know, the, the the malls are shutting down. All these places, you know, we can't even we can't even go to Applebee's right now and and hang out and eat. All these 
uh, these options that all these things that we have in the past possibly put before God, those are now gone. And so what an incredible opportunity to, to really take personal inventory and ask God, where have I been lacking? You know, do I have a prayer life at my home? Um, do I take time to read scripture each day? And if not, you know, why not start now? Uh, this is just a really cool opportunity. I know in the midst of chaos, there's, I, I don't want to whitewash what is going on. I'm not insinuating that this is a good thing by any means. But I do believe that some good can come from it and that we can allow God to, uh, to really move in our lives during this time. So the first thing is for a chance to take inventory. The second thing, after we've examined ourselves, why not... Why not allow this to be a time of uh, refocus, to recalibrate our lives and say, you know, God, I, I realize there's been some areas in my life that I've been lacking. I, I've, I've seen that. I can experience that. But I want to use now as the perfect opportunity to get back on track. Um, this is not meant for us to be condemned. We know that uh, Romans 8 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. So why not walk in the Spirit now? Why not use this opportunity now to say, God, I've fallen short, but by your mercy I've been granted this time to, to really get back on track. And I think that we can use this, um, this in a mighty way. So why don't we try this? Let's say that, let's say that you've, you've taken some inventory and you're trying to recalibrate, why not create a prayer schedule? Why not use, you know, uh, the first 10 minutes of the day, find a place, uh, find a, a war room, so to speak, and, and make t that intentional effort to really develop a prayer life. And, and do that if you're home, if you're quarantined right now, why not do that again around lunchtime? And then and do, do another 10 to 15 minutes around bedtime and, and let that add up and all of a sudden, you may have thought, man, I could never pray uh, an hour a day. But, but you've taken that hour-long prayer and you've developed uh, a way of spreading it out to really connect with God throughout the day. And I believe that we're called to have a spirit of prayer. And so prayer is not merely just an activity that I'm going to do, but prayer is, is a spirit that I possess. It's, it's something that I, I, I walk with each and every day. And if I walk in the spirit, I don't have to worry about condemnation. And finally, uh, before we get into our text, I think this is a really cool opportunity for us to have a fresh sense of purpose. Uh, we started out 2020 with, with our vision. Vision 2020 is know, go, sow, and grow. And just because we're in a situation that we're in right now, that vision has not changed. Um, and, and so I think what happens sometimes, uh, if you'll allow me, is is sometimes we get into this routine maybe of, of just coming to church and, and week after week, you know, it's something that we do. We just go to church and, and we don't misunderstand me. We have to go to church. We need to fellowship together. I can't wait till we're back together physically. But what if we could use this opportunity to kind of break that routine of church, the, the way that we've always done it and understand that God wants all of us to be involved in his mission. You know, we're not, regardless of, of what title we may have in church or don't have, we're all the body of Christ. And I, I truly believe that we all have a unique gifting and talent that we can offer, offer to God so that we can be used for his mission. So let me just pose this question. What if God is trying to wake up the entire body and remind all of us that we play a vital role in the kingdom. First uh, Corinthians 12 says, uh, starting in verse 12, For as the body is one and hath many members, and are all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. It goes on to say, what if the foot says, I'm not the hand? 
Or what if the ear says, I'm not the eye? Is that not a part of the body? And so this morning, uh, I just want to say that every one of us, as we come together, we are the body of Christ. The church is not limited. It is not confined by our four walls, but that we are the body of Christ. We are the church. And so if you are a born-again, spirit-filled believer, you have a, a special purpose within the body of Christ. And so uh, let it never be said of us at Truth Tabernacle uh, that we are uh, just satisfied with a weekly gathering, you know, Sundays and Wednesdays, and, and we allow that to justify our sitting on the sidelines. But let's, let's wake up to the day and hour in which we live and understand that God wants to do something powerful during this time of turmoil and chaos. Amen. So going to Acts 16, and I, um, I apologize. There is, I don't see anything on my screen here that lets, uh, lets me know how long I've been going. Um, so I apologize. I'm, I'm going to just do the best I can here. Sorry if it's, if it's too long or too short, uh, for the, for the broadcast, but I, uh, I apologize for that. Acts 16, starting in verse 23, says, After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the, the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. See, Paul and Silas found themselves uh, in a position where they were wrongly accused, and they had done nothing criminal, and yet they still uh, endured the consequences uh, of their surroundings. And we see first it says they were stripped. And so in an honor and shame culture that was the first century Mediterranean world, being stripped of one's clothing was the ultimate act of shame and indignity. And I was kind of thinking of the parallels of how we could apply this story to our 21st century world. And by no means am I suggesting that what we're going through is, is the same as what Paul and Silas had to endure. Um, but just I was just looking for some parallels. And, and you know, we're, we may not be stripped of our clothes per se, but... What if we're stripped of our dignity? What if we're stripped of our job? What if we're stripped of our peace? And, and all of a sudden, you feel exposed and you feel as if you've completely lost control of your life. You know, one day you were living this normal existence and you had a job and a, and a career and a routine and all of a sudden now you find that in jeopardy. And so just like Paul and Silas were in the book of Acts, you now feel stripped. And next, the Bible says not only were they stripped, but they were also beaten. And, you know, the physical pain the, that they were in, for, forced to endure by those rods must have been debilitating. And these men, having done no wrong, were taking these blows from the authorities simply because they preached about the name of Jesus. Uh, again, while the comparison may seem insufficient as we aren't physically beaten, doesn't it feel like we are taking some blows right now? Uh, doesn't it feel like we've been beaten mentally and emotionally and even spiritually by the news and the posts we see 
on social media. And so maybe the enemy is beating you down. He's causing you to doubt. He's making you feel abandoned as if somehow God was maybe caught off guard by COVID-19. And so hour by hour, day by day, you are taking a beating with this situation. And finally, we read that they were thrown into prison. They were placed into the innermost part of the prison as a punishment for their perceived crimes. You know, not only were they stripped, not only were they beaten, but, but after all of this unfair treatment, they lost their freedom. They were put in an environment not of their choosing, but they didn't allow their location to determine their attitude. You know, because sometimes we can be placed in an environment that is outside of our control. And we don't have a choice in the matter. Dur during this time, th this social distancing, it, it may feel like we're stuck. It may feel like we're in, we're in kind of like a prison. Maybe, maybe you're a mom and uh, your kids are now home from school and you're getting a taste of what homeschooling may look like. And so uh, uh, you might feel like pulling your hair out. I don't know. But, uh, you know, you are in a place that you weren't expecting. And you're thinking, God, why did I get put here? What's going on? I, I didn't. Are you punishing me? Maybe you've created this prison in your mind. And, and you're a dad or a, a, a parent or a caregiver. And you're living in this prison of fear and anxiety. And you're saying, what if... What if I lose my job? I, I, I don't have enough savings put back. I, am I going to lose everything? Am I going to lose my home? Am I going to lose my car? Am I, is everything that I have in jeopardy? But Paul and Silas recognized that even in the midst of their prison, they still had a reason to lift up praises to the Lord. I wonder, do we respond that way? Are we giving thanks to God in the middle of a global pandemic and on the verge of an economic collapse? Are we giving everything we have to God? You know, what if, what if Paul would have said, God, I was doing the right thing and I ended up in prison. Could you imagine Paul and Silas just kind of sitting there, just kind of pouting in the midnight hour as they sat in prison? And yet... They understood regardless of their circumstance, regardless of their current situation, Jesus Christ is still deserving of my praise. In verse 25 and 26, it says, to them, and uh, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Did we catch that? And everyone that was in the prison, their chains came loose. So what if the praises that we sing right now in our own perceived prison of this quarantine had the ability to reach our neighbor? What if the way we are responding right now in our homes as we're locked up, what if that what if that peace that we possess, which passes all understanding, kind of, what if that spirit kind of moves down your neighborhood and people start looking towards your house as the house that has peace in the midnight hour? See, here, here's what I find to be the most incredible part of the story with this uh, Paul and Silas situation is their relationship with the prison guard. Because... After, after all that they had faced, they still had a connectedness to the Spirit of God, which allowed them to have the right attitude and to see the opportunity in the prison. Paul understood that the prison had a purpose. Do we believe that? That our prison could somehow, in some way, have a purpose. You see, I, I never understood. You know, the, the story says that the doors flang open. And if it were me, I mean, I would just be scooting on out of there. I would have said, I don't deserve to be here in the first place. 
and I'm definitely not going to stay here now. So the moment that my bonds were broken and the prison doors flung wide open, I would have just, just darted, darted out of there. But they understood that there was something more going on. You see, last night when I was kind of wrapping up this devotional, I couldn't help but think that maybe, maybe Paul and Silas understood that their prison had a purpose. Maybe by keeping the right attitude during that time of difficulty, they were somehow able to see into the life of the prison guard who was searching for something. Imagine the amazement of the guard as Paul shouted, just as the guard drew his sword to, to kill himself, Paul shouted, don't hurt yourself. We're all here. And in verse 30, we see the guard, eventually he releases the prisoners and he says, what, what must I do to be saved? So just a few short verses later, the prison guard and his entire household were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Think about that for a moment. The prison guard went from suicidal to saved because Paul and Silas were sensitive to the needs of those around them, even in the middle of their unfair treatment. See, because we can't control the turmoil that's around us. There is nothing any one of us can do. There is nothing that we can do to make this virus go away any faster. But you know what we can control? We can control our attitude. We can, we can control the spirit that we possess. With, without a doubt, there is one aspect that we have the power over, and that is the attitude and the spirit that we carry during this time. What if God has put us in this circumstance for a season just to, to be a light to somebody around us? You know, Paul would have never met that guard had he never been placed in prison. But because he was in prison, because he was put in a location that he, he didn't choose, he, he was placed in contact with a prison guard who was searching for the answer to life's greatest question, what must I do to be saved? Can we be spiritually mature enough to recognize that God is doing something unique in this hour. Isaiah says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What if we, as spirit-filled believers, are rivers in the desert right now for people who may have never came in contact with us otherwise because our lives are so busy and our schedules are so filled. But God is allowing us right now in this hour to be a river in the middle of a desert. I want to share something, uh, something with you that happened to me just the other morning. I had walked outside, walked outside my apartment and, um, my neighbor was outside and, we're very friendly, and, and uh, uh, we, we usually chat for just a, a moment or two whenever we see each other. But we were talking, and I said, and, and she's an older, an older lady. I said, hey, if you need anything, please don't hesitate. Leave a note at the door, whatever, and, and we can get out and, and get you something. And uh, she, we started talking about this situation because everybody, not just the church, Everybody is experiencing this time of uncertainty. Everybody is, is feeling rocked to their very core by what's going on right now. And so we started talking about how things were going. And uh, eventually it shifted to her, her church schedule. And she was talking about her ser how her services were impacted. And she'd never seen anything like this before. And, and we were just dialoguing. And, and I try and be extra sensitive. I, I don't want to seem overbearing. And you know what? She said, by the way, 
what church do you go to? And and we begin to we get begin to talk about where our church is and 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 then she asked a very interesting question that it kind of left me perplexed. She didn't say what denomination is that? She didn't say what what do you guys believe? You know what she asked me? She said, "What's your mission? What's your church's mantra?" She wanted to know what my church, what we as the church are doing to reach the world. Somebody that that we would look at and say, "Man, they they need more truth or they need they need a greater walk with God." She looked at me and asked, "What is our mission?" Though that door, I didn't have to kick that door open. That door naturally came because of the situation that we find ourselves in today. And I think as as much as we are, are ready to go go back to meeting together physically and, and we're looking forward to that here here hopefully sooner rather than later. But what if God could do something in this hour? What if we had the right spirit? See, my, my fear is and I, I have to reflect inwardly because We've got a little bit more time on our hands now. And so maybe you're finding yourself on social media a little bit more than usual. Here's the problem. There's so much negativity on social media right now that we can become bogged down. And we begin, we begin to compare ourselves. Well, what's that person's opinion? And and well, well what, that person doesn't doesn't do the way that I'm I'm doing it. No, and, all of these things, that church is, is doing their services this way and why can't we do this or what? We, we need to just drown out the distractions. God has, God has removed so many distractions from us. But those last little distractions, the distractions we find in our home, whether it be TV, Netflix, Facebook, whatever it is, drown out the noise. Drown out those distractions. Don't allow it to influence your mind and, and you get trapped in this uh, negativity. Let's be the church. Let's have the right spirit. If Paul and Silas in Acts 16 would have had a negative spirit, that, that jailer would have never experienced the power that comes through the name of Jesus. But because they understood in this prison, I have a purpose. They were able to be used mightily by God. And so I just want to encourage us this morning. I know this is a little different. I know we're, we're, tr we're doing our best here. We're trying. But I just want to encourage you this morning that this so-called perceived prison, this quarantine that we're, we're partaking in or some of us are partaking in, why don't you, why don't you look for the opportunity that's in that prison. Why don't you use this time? Listen, if you're off work, God's got it. He's in control. And st don't just stress about, uh, use this time to get closer to God. Use this time at home to really develop a connection with Him, to spend time with our family, you know, to... Read that book you've been putting off. There's so many constructive things that we can do. We can, we can rest in knowing that God has got us uh, in the palm of his hand. So I want to, um, I just want to conclude this morning. Again, I apologize. I don't know how long this has went. Um, I, I'll, I'm sure I'll figure it out when I'm done here, but um, I apologize for that, but thank you so much. Those of you that have joined live, those of you that will watch later on, we thank you. Uh, we love you. We miss you. We can't wait to gather together physically again, but until that moment, understand that the church will never stop being the church, that, that we win. You know, uh, Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There's no pestilence. There's no economic uh, failure. There's nothing that will hinder this end time church. God's got us under 
uh, God's got this under control and we're going to be just fine. Why don't we all, wherever you are in your living room, wherever, why don't we close in prayer? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time together. I know this is a little different, but God, we're trying to meet together. We're trying to continue in the mission that you've given us. We ask right now, Jesus, that every person that's facing this situation, every person that's been infected by this virus, those loved ones who are grieving the loss of a loved one right now, I pray that you would be a healer. God, that you would be a comforter, that you would bring peace that passes all understanding. Lord, I pray for every person watching live right now, God, that your precious peace, God, that your spirit would just, just move into their living rooms, move into their homes, let them know, let them feel and experience the power that comes from knowing and loving you. We're asking right now, Jesus, that you would take dominion and authority over this virus. God, that you would move like only you can do right now. We pray, Jesus, that we would be the church, not just be, not just go to a church building, but God, right now in this unique hour, that we would be who you've called us to be, that we would be a light in the middle of darkness, a city set on a hill which cannot be hid. We thank you for the revival that will come from this hour, and we're giving you all glory and honor and praise, and we worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, folks, we are uh, going to be having some going to be having some cool things in the coming days. Some more content. Uh, we're trying to figure out how we're going to structure that. Please pay attention to this page, and um, feel free to add someone who you think may be. Uh, may be interested in following along in this journey. We love you and God bless. See you soon in Jesus' name.